like to call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Delayed. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Livingood? Present. Councilor Micucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Regis? Present. Councilor Spinelli? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight present, one delayed. Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, October 3rd, 2011 meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports. A, general government. Councillor Spinelli. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no minutes to read from for this time, but we did have a meeting. Um, I will read them at the next council meeting. Thank you. Um, B, DPW. Councillor Vandal. Madam Chair, a meeting of the DPW subcommittee was held on Monday, October 17, 2011, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Subcommittee members, Councilor Langevin, citizen members, Mark Morin and Maurice Capistrand. Also in attendance was Maureen Chesler. I call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote to ratify agreement with the American Rock Salt. Mrs. Chesler said the price decreased by almost $5 per ton from last year. A motion was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the contract with American Rock Salt at a unit price of $58.54 per ton for a minimum of 1,500 tons and a maximum of 2,500 tons through June 30, 2012. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to zero. Agenda item number two, discuss and vote to ratify agreement with Cargill Incorporated. Mrs. Chesler said the price decreased by over $7.50 per ton from last year. The savings to the town is over $26,000 from last year, assuming the same usage. A motion was made by Council Langevin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the agreement with Cargill Incorporated at the unit price of $75.96 per ton for a minimum of 1,125 tons and a maximum of 1,875 tons through June 30, 2012. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to zero. Agenda item number three. Discuss and vote to ratify the agreement with Hilka Construction Company for screen sand. Mrs. Chesler said this is the same price as last year. A motion was made by Council Landman and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the agreement with Hilka, Hilka Construction Company at a price of $15.25 delivered or $12.50 picked up through June 30, 2012. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to zero. A motion to adjourn was made by myself and seconded by Mr. Morin. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to zero. I adjourn the meeting at 7.07 .07 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor Vandal. C, Education and Human Services. From what I see, there was no um, meeting minutes. D, planning and development. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no uh, report and no meeting scheduled right now. Thank you, Councillor. E, protection of persons and property. Councillor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. No report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. Um, agenda item number five, Chairwoman's announcements. I have none. C, ah, C, six, town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do have uh, several announcements this evening. Uh, first, we have received some information from uh, the cable operator uh, charter, and they have alerted us that there will be the first nationwide test of the U.S. emergency alert system will occur at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on November 9th at uh, 2001, and it will interrupt programming on all channels from all service providers for a few minutes. Uh, they do recommend if there's folks that have interest in finding out more information, they can visit uh, the website, www.fcc.gov, 
slash PSHS. And just one other note on that uh, material they sent out that they said that uh, normally the tests last 30 seconds, those emergency broadcasts, uh, but they're saying that this one could last up to three and a half minutes. So it is going to be something that will be um, disruptive. We also um, received back from the Attorney General's office a couple of um, notes in regards to um, the open meeting law violations that were submitted or open meeting law complaints that were submitted. Uh, one was in regards to uh, Laurent McDonald. Uh, the date of that was uh, September 16th, and we have heard back that accordingly we presume that the action taken by the public body was sufficient and will close this file unless we receive a request for further review uh, by this office and a copy of the initial complaint by December 12th. So at least pending, that seems to be that that's been resolved unless further review is sought by the complainant. And also uh, similar to uh, the complaint that we received from John Pulowski, um, and that was dated on September 7th. Are the mics loud? A little, a little bit better. Thank you. The second one is from, um, the, the second complaint was John Pulowski, and the same finding that they believe that the action taken by the public body was sufficient and will close the file unless we receive a request for further review by this office and a copy of the initial complaint by November 7, 2011. From the um, Economic Development Department, we received a couple of um, requests for um, announcements to be made. The first one is that the uh, Town of Southbridge Community Development Block Grant Program is seeping, seeking applicants for the Housing Rehabilitation Program in the Morris, Coombe Street, and Worcester Henry Street neighborhood target areas. Assistance is given in the form of deferred payment loans to owner occupants who qualify for our income-based program. These special home improvement loans are forgiven if you retain ownership and residency for 15 years. Applicants must own their home for at least a year and have a well-established record of timely payments. For more information, please contact the Economic Development and Planning Office at 508-764-5402 for an application and the map of the uh, target area. <coughs> also on the uh, Community Development Block Grant front, uh, we have received uh, an announcement that the uh, Economic Development Director wanted to have made in regards to the Henry Street project, the Henry Street reconstruction work is due to begin a week from today. Uh, the contractor is J.H. Lynch and Sons, Inc. The work includes storm drainage, sidewalks, and roadway reconstruction, easing the corner at Worcester and Henry Streets, and a new handicap, including new handicap ramps. It should take about four weeks. We expect that any inconvenience to be of short duration but we do appreciate everyone's cooperation and pa patience while the work is going forward. At certain times during the work, the road from Worcester Street will be blocked so that abutters will need to come in from the park entrance. When the work is taking place directly within the roadway, abutters may have to park their cars within the park entrance and walk in, but we want to reassure everyone that there will always be a way to get to your home. Uh, the final coat of asphalt may be delayed until spring. If that happens, the contractor will leave the street so that it's safe and comfortable for traffic during the winter. And then lastly, uh, the social services and the community development block grant application. This year, the priorities for, the, for our community development block grant social services are the categories of mentoring, assistance to elders, and literacy. We propose up to two social service projects with a combined limit of $100,000 in the town's community development block grant application. Proposal packages are available in the Economic Development and Planning Office. The number, again, is 508-764-5402. A public notice is being placed on the town's website in the town clerk's office, the town manager's office, the community center, and the library. Proposals are due on November 7th. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. At this time, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to move item eight into front of item seven. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor of the move from the agenda items, just switching A, um, um, agenda item eight, swearing in presentations to the seventh spot and uh, citizens forum to follow after. 
Can I have a show of hands on that? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number seven, swearing in and presentations. This evening I have um, some presentations that I would like to make. I will call the people that are receiving these from the podium if you would please step forward as I call your name. I have before me four presentations for some citizens who have been dedicating many years of service to the Southbridge Optimist Club. The first is Paul Servant. Paul Servant, for many years of dedicated service and continuous membership in the Southbridge Optimist Club. It's dated October 24, 2011, with appreciation and best wishes to you from the Town Council and citizens of the Town of Southbridge. Thank you, Mr. Servant. Thank you. Thank you. Louis, Louise Stryker. Louise Stryker, for many years of dedicated service and continuous membership in the Southbridge Optimist Club, October 24, 2011, with appreciation and best wishes to you from the Town Council and citizens of the Town of Southbridge. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stryker. Okay, thank you. Thank you. John and Joanne Sohenick. 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 Sorry about that. Mr. Sohenick, for many years of dedicated service and continuous membership in the Southbridge Optimist Club, October 24, 2011, with appreciation and best wishes to you from the Town Council and citizens of the Town of Southbridge. Thank you and to Thank you Mrs. Much. Thank you very much. Oh, is this one here? I don't know if this one's hers. I think that's for both of you. This is for somebody else. Yes. Thank you. And this lady isn't here, but I'd also like to. Um, recognize Jean Turner for the many years of dedicated service and continuous membership in the Southbridge Optimist Club. Ms. Turner, wherever you are, we will get this to you with appreciation and best wishes to you from the Town Council and citizens of the Town of Southbridge. I thank you for your dedicated service and to all of you, thank you so much. We also have um, Cassandra Ackley will be coming forward to present two businesses, uh, two new businesses in town. Mrs. Ackley. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Well, it's my pleasure this evening to introduce two new Southbridge businesses to you. You may have already seen them, and you actually may have already visited them. It so happens that both of these businesses are in the downtown area. Masood Zia of Crown Fried Chicken is here this evening to share a little bit about his new restaurant at 45 Hamilton Street. I've visited it. I've enjoyed it. I've lingered long over the uh, little refrigerated case of desserts, which are unbelievable. Wow. So um, I'll let Zia tell you just a, Mr. Zia tell you just a little bit about his restaurant. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Just opened a new place on July 21st, which is a Crown Fried Chicken, 45 Hamilton Street. Uh, we try the best to be help the community, plus the town, and appreciate everybody's business here as well, in the community of Southbridge. Anybody, so when 
Do you guys try to help us? Then we try to help the town. Anytime you guys most welcome. If any question for my food or our service, you guys can just contact me anytime. Not a problem. And I really appreciate a Southbridge again for the business. Thank you so much. If anybody have a question. Thank you. And good luck to you, sir. Good luck to you. Wow. And we have another new retail store at 317 to 319 Main Street. Planters Envy. If you have not been in yet, uh, you might want to do so. They have some very intriguing uh, displays. As a matter of fact, they were busy before they were even open. I think that shows how um, welcoming their show, uh, their show window is in the front. Uh, Larry Dufault is here to tell you a little bit about the business, and I just wanted to mention that both of these businesses are in locations which the town council um, approved CDBG facade improvement projects for. That's kind of a nice ending to a story. Thanks. Thank you, Sandra, and thank you to the council for giving us this opportunity this evening. Um, this plant of Zemby was really my son's brainstorm. He's been wanting to do something like this for years, and finally uh, a hobby just became too big, and here we are. Um, we're at 319 Main Street, and at Plant of Zemby, you can find a potted plant for everybody. We don't do cut flowers or floral arrangements, but we stay uh, in an area that you'll find usual to unusual. Anything from a geranium to a, a, a banana tree. So there's everything in between. Um, we are doing some things with arrangements in what they call gardens, which are nice gifts. And uh, we'll be doing some nice things for the holidays. Um, we appreciate the support we've gotten since we opened on October 8th from the community of Southbridge and beyond. Um, and a number of people have asked, why have you located in Southbridge? And our answer always is, why not? You have a beautiful Main Street, um, and I believe there's like 26 or 27,000 cars a day that pass our store. And it's, I can't tell you how many times people have stopped out front in the traffic and taken pictures of the business. So I, I think it's a, a great thing for Southbridge, and we're hopeful to be very successful with it. And thank you again. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Ackley. Okay. Agenda item number um, eight, Citizens Forum. Do we have any citizens who wish to come forward this evening? Dennis Martinek from Pine Ridge Road. Good evening. I want to share a story with people of Southbridge, something that I bore witness to at last week's town council meeting. My friend Ann Fenwick Bynema was to have been discussed as a topic in executive session, supposedly as part of a legal action that ironically has not as of yet been initiated. Ann requested that this hearing be held in the court of public opinion, whereupon the town manager, town attorney, and certain members of the town council presented what they called factual reasons as to why Ann should be removed from the Board of Health. Five counselors, four current and one former counselor, even went so far as to sign affidavits stating that if at the time of the aforementioned vote on September 14, 2009, I was aware that Ann Fenwick Bynema had not yet removed herself from the lawsuit against the town Board of Health, I would not have voted affirmatively for her confirmation to the Board of Health on September 14, 2009. Our town attorney used the story of Jim Thorpe and how he had, used, how he had his Olympic medals taken away from him for cheating namely being paid to play professional sports. To anyone not listening to it, the town's arguments sounded compelling, perhaps even damning, of Anne. As Councillor Regis stated, if you think there's a conspiracy against you, you should see YA to make sure that you have copies and triplicate of what you submitted. All very sanitized, all very orderly, with a statement by the town attorney that the councillors had a responsibility to do their jobs and to vote, prompting a six to one vote for Anne's removal. However, a funny thing happened this past weekend. Mike Marchetti found a video of the town council meeting on 14 September 2009, which you haven't already, if you haven't already seen it, can be found at speakoutsouthbridge.com or YouTube. In the video, two current councillors spoke to the issue of Ann's appointment. Councillor Clements said, quote, 
At the EHS subcommittee meeting on September 2, 2009, present included Councillors Clements, Regis, Livinggood, Laza, Nicola, Vecchia, and Vandal, unquote, as well as Brian Lee from the TNG and other citizens. Quote, Mr. Clark stated that all the information requested from Ms. Fenwick Bynema had been received. Not some, but all the information. Councillor Regis said during the same meeting, quote, the information that we had asked for from Ms. Fenwick Bynema, we did get. But we did also request that once everything was submitted to Superior Court and actually filed and signed by the Superior Court, that we ask that a copy of that be placed on file with the town. So I think it's important that these minutes do note that, unquote. The minutes, however, do not note that. So last week's hearing, based on the admissions from both Councillors Clements and Regis on 14 September 2009, seemed to me to serve to acknowledge and accept as fact and proof that Anne did exactly what she said she did, submit her paperwork. Which brings about the question why, with all five councillors present at the subcommittee meeting, who all heard the same thing, knowing that Anne had complied with the law, took this brazen action last week, full of the knowledge that the charges that they made were under false pretenses, not by Anne, though, by the town council, the town manager, and the town attorney. It also brings into question the following. Five current and former councillors signed under the pains and penalties of perjury an affidavit stating had they known, they would not have voted for her. It's obvious from the video that all of those councillors were present, that they did know, and that the hearing was a violation of Anne's civil rights, if not the law, and an attempt to circumvent procedure to remove her, so that tonight, on yet another redo vote, the town manager can try to regain power to appoint to the Board of Health. Councillor Regis was correct when she said that there was a conspiracy and that she should see why A. But unfortunately, it's not Anne who created the conspiracy, and she's not the one that needs to see why her A. It's the town council who, as a result of their actions against Anne, will no doubt find themselves in court. And for what? Charging Anne with something that was inherently wrong, that they had already had the answer to, were aware of, but kept from the people of this town to whom they report. I therefore encourage the citizens of Southbridge starting tomorrow to call the town manager and call for his resignation, as well as the immediate resignations of any councillors that participated against Anne at this reprehensible meeting. Aesop said in his fable, The Wolf and the Lamb, quote, the tyrant will always find a pretext for his tyranny, and it's useless for the innocent to try by reasoning to get justice when the oppressor intends to be unjust, unquote. This council, with two notable exceptions, should be ashamed of themselves, and they should pay with the loss of their positions and power. Thank you and good night. Are there any other citizens wishing to come forward? Good evening, Monique Mana, 20 Maple Street, Southbridge. I just wanted to thank everyone who came out for the chloramines meeting um, on October 18th. It was very informational. We um, did record it, and we will be submitting the DVD um, to be played on, on public access. I also would like to just mention that um, we will be, the, the Future of Southwich group um, will be decorating downtown again. <laughs> um, and we're looking for help. Um, if anybody would like to volunteer their services to help decorate the town, I know Santa's helpers have been very busy at creating um, lots of decorations this year. Um, you can contact myself, 774-230-0156, or you can contact Mr. Whitney at 774-230-8016, and we're looking for help um, for the second and third weekend in November. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Good evening, councillors, um, friends. First, I have two points to make tonight. First, Could you please I would, um, um, state sorry. your name. Ross Hale Fernandez, 56 Everett, right behind Town Hall. Um, I would like to discuss two things here tonight. First, I would like to apologize for some words I used two meetings ago that were misunderstood. You see, I was born in Mexico, and English is my second language. I sometimes use words that are a bit more colorful than they should be. As you know, Spanish is a colorful and beautiful language, although I don't think the town manager knows that. He quoted me in the Telegram and Gazette as saying something that I never actually said, 
Muerto, 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 they're trying to kill you. Apparently I sound like Speedy Gonzalez to the town manager. So back to my point. I mistakenly conveyed feelings of love and happiness coming from the majority of this council towards the town manager. Feelings have no place here. I was corrected by this council at the meeting with several points of order called so councillors could yell at me. For the life of me, I can't find where in Robert's Rules of Order or town council rules it says that you can interrupt a speaker to yell at him. Anyway, I was reminded by my family, my touchstone, that what I should have said was seven members of this council, as documented by their voting record and video, fully support the actions of this town manager. Of all the actions submitted to the town council by Mr. Clark since the beginning of this session, seven of you supported him virtually 100% of the time, the only exceptions being both Councillor McDonald and Vandal at less than 40%, a pattern that I think will repeat itself here tonight. On record, in front of these video cameras and our live audience, Again, I apologize for my slip, and I will be more exacting with my language in the future. My second point for tonight is about Anne Fenwick Bynuma. She doesn't know this, but it was she that inspired me to speak up. My first town meeting was a Board of Health meeting. Seeing her hold the line on this community's health against a behemoth corporation, which is backed by our own local government, defended by our own lawyers, shielded by our own health department, and guarded by former Chairman O'Leary, who in his own words was concerned about the financial liability of Anne's actions. Seeing all this was like watching the lone man armed with only a shopping bag in Tiananmen Square, Beijing, China against an army of tanks. Her ethics and morals are inspiring, especially juxtaposed against the power of corporate greed and government inaction. You should all be so lucky to witness bravery of that caliber at some point. It too may move you to action. Counselors, Ms. Fenwick Bynuma paid good money for the town and each of the councillor members to get free advice from a brilliant lawyer last week who urged you to weigh the evidence before taking questionable action, actions that have made each of you personally liable according to case law. On a side note, it was nice to see, the real, uh, it was nice to see real law being practiced in this chamber for once. I had, gotten, I had forgotten what it was like. In closing, Ms. Fenwick Bynuma has kept the protections of this community as her prime goal at her own peril. And for that, a transparent, rehearsed kangaroo court was set up, acting as police, judge, and executioner to smear her good deeds. Well, just as Anne's lawyer warned, all of that's falling apart before our eyes, and Ms. Fenwick Bynum may just recoup a good amount of her initial investment. Respectfully, I urge that for the sake of this council and any shred of credibility you have left, if you are going to rescind anything here tonight, rescind the damaging actions you performed last week. Southbridge is watching. Thank you. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Debbie Gregoire Lefebvre, 3 Violet Avenue. I just wanted to mention that our trash pickup is on Fridays, and I was under the impression from a previous meeting that we have certain rules we need to follow, but I believe that the people that pick up the trash are supposed to return the trash container in the same position and where it was originally picked up. Ours was flipped upside down and the cover was not attached. So I just wanted to mention that. I don't know if that's happened to other people. I know it has happened to a family member as well, which I really don't want to publicly disclose the name, but it has happened. So again, I don't know if it's happened to other people, but I just wanted to make a mention it did happen to us Friday, and I hope it's not a repeat this Friday. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to come forward? Any other citizens have anything? Good evening. My name is Hugh McKinnon. I live at 21 William Street in Southbridge. Greetings. Um, just have a couple of minor things I wanted to bring up. Uh, I'm suffering from some sight and movement impairment, and uh, I chose to come in the entrance nearest the elevator. It was uh, rather dark and uninviting, and I'm sure that wasn't any. It wasn't intended by anyone here or in the town, but I, I would. It would be really appreciative if the lights in that area could be uh, beefed up so that we can see what we're doing. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, the other one's a little harsher, I'm sorry to say. Uh, my father 
was named Robert G. McKinnon, and, and the, the chambers were named for him. He never asked for that. Um, after witnessing what I've seen recently, perhaps he'd be more emphatic about having his name taken down. This has been sorrowful. It's a shame. It's a pity. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Uh, John Pulaski, uh, Jenison Street, Southbridge. Uh, ladies and gentlemen on the council, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, um, there's been a lot of talk in town this weekend, especially after the uh, revelation of the uh, video of the meeting of September in 2009 when Mrs. Bynum was appointed to the, uh, the Board of Health. It's very clear that if you folks saw that before the meeting on uh, Wednesday night, or if it was presented here, if it was available at that time, the uh, outcome of the vote would have been very different. That being said, and I'm not being critical at all of the person that takes the minutes, because uh, I know minutes get edited after they're prepared by people, and not only in these meetings, but other meetings. It's done for good reasons. you know. Some, but sometimes, but sometimes it's done for political reasons. And, and this is why I think it's important that we have captured and prepared for posterity all videos of town council meetings. It would even be helpful to have them of subcommittee meetings. Some towns do it, but this would, with this would stop little messes that look like may occur, not only what happened last Wednesday, but what may happen as a result of this Wednesday. Also, I felt a little guilt. I was watching Anne, and I was thinking, where does she get her strength? Because she, I don't think I would have been able to uh, keep my temper if I was being uh, dragged through the mud like uh, she was last Wednesday. And I remember, and I've discussed this with people in town, nothing was done about it. We have sometimes two sets of rules. But last June, and I, I got to admit, I was kind of hanging around by the soda machine a little longer than I should have been. But I was outside the Board of Health uh, meeting place during an executive session in June. And uh, we all know that the discussion was over the, uh, the site assignment. And ladies and gentlemen, in that room, I'm not going to mention any names, but there was a male voice, I will not call him a gentleman, who used language where if I used one third as much language that he used, foul language, I'd be arrested. It was outrageous. It even sounded like some furniture was thrown around. Now, that's not how we should be running private meetings. If that's what, you know, perhaps that's why Mrs. Bynum, one of the reasons, I'm not speaking for her, but maybe one of the reasons that meeting was held in public uh, Wednesday instead of in closed, I wouldn't get in closed session in this, uh, you know, no matter what was being allegedly revealed about me. It, it, I think that should be investigated by, well, as be due to uh, past trends, this town uh, council didn't want the Southbridge police investigating an open meeting violation about a year and a half ago. I don't think the local police should be charged with responsibility of investigating what happened in June in that executive session. And I do think, considering, uh, and it's just an opinion, but if you look at your town council meeting last Wednesday, and you look at the town council meeting uh, on, I believe it was September the 15th, 2000, uh, 2009, I think you would agree that there should be some sort of investigation either by the district attorney or the state police to find out what's behind these shenanigans where someone's trying to do their job and they're either being bullied or thrown off a committee for doing their job. You folks know more than I, this has probably got more to do with an upcoming site assignment than it does with any information that Ann Bynum allegedly failed to bring before you, because it's very clear, a counselor confirms it with her own words, that she knew that Ann Bynum had clearly stated, not that she was off the case, that she had withdrawn her name from the case, and that, she, that you all would be waiting 
for a uh, judge to release her from the case. There was, there was no funny business going on. Mr. Caprera, you weren't the town attorney. I noticed you were, became the town attorney later in that meeting. So perhaps you weren't giving it your eagle eye attention because you weren't officially our town attorney yet. But later on, earlier in that same meeting, if you had uh, uh, remembered what happened at that time, I, I doubt you would have been behind what happened uh, this, this past Wednesday. So thank you for your time. And uh, also I appreciate when I mentioned my dad uh, last week, I appreciate all the phone calls that I received. We, we have a very loving town and I wish we could somehow bring the love that's in this community uh, into the town council, into our town government, and let's all work together again. Thank you. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Okay, we're going to move on to agenda item number nine. Vote to reappoint Dean Cook of Southbridge to the Conservation Committee for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingan? Yes. Councilor Mancucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to reappoint Margaret Morrissey as director of Jacob Edwards Library for a three-year term, effective immediately through December 8th, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Livingan? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to reappoint Robert Narowski as Veterans Graves Officer, effective immediately for a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2012. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe the name is supposed to be Roger Narowski, and that Veterans funny. Graves Registration Officer. Roger. Roger. And it's Veterans Graves Officer? I, think, I believe it's Veterans Graves Registration Officer. Registration Officer. Madam Chair. Yes. Why is Councilor this Lincoln. only for a one-year appointment and the others are for three years? I believe that that's been the practice that's been for this position. This position has been a one-year appointment, I believe. For some in, reason. In right the along. future, in the future, you know, like next year, maybe we could plan ahead and make it a three-year appointment if, if it's allowed by statute we will oh, have to okay check. thank yeah okay, okay. thank you we'll thank check you. on that yes thank you okay thank you um i have a second on this could i have a roll call please Councilor Marcucci? yes Councilor mcdonald yes Councilor nicola yes Councilor regis yes Councilor spinelli yes Councilor vandal yes Councilor clements yes Councilor langevin yes Councilor livingood yes nine yes Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and American Rock Salt for goods and services related to highway road salt in accordance with the cooperative bid unit price of $58.54 per ton for a minimum of 1,500 tons and a maximum of 2,500 tons through June 30th, 2012. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Mancucci? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 13, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Cargill Incorporated for goods and services related to sodium chloride salt treated in accordance with the cooperative bid price of $75.96 per ton for a minimum of 1,125 tons and a maximum of 1,875 tons through June 30th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Mycucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Nine yes. Thank you. Agenda item 14, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and 
Hilka Construction Company Incorporated to furnish and or deliver screened sand in accordance with the contract at the bid unit price of $15.25 delivered or $12.50 $12 picked up. Total anticipated duration of contract will be June 30th, 2012. The town reserves the right to annually renew the contract not to extend later than June 30th, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Livingood? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 15, vote to authorize the town manager to enter into agreement with natural gas and electric suppliers for up to 36 months to lock in the lowest prices for natural gas and electric for all town and school accounts. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Livingood? Yes. Councillor Micucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 16, vote to ratify the reactivation of the lease with Central Las Americas Incorporated as a tenant at will for the lower level portion of 114 Pleasant Street in the amount of $500 per month. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Livingood? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. And Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 17. Vote to accept a motion to rescind the action taken by the town council at its regular meeting of October 3rd, 2011, relative to supporting an amendment to the Southbridge Home Rule Charter to include a five-member elected Board of Health. So moved. Second. Discussion. Madam Chair, could we take a five-minute break? Yes. Thank you. And when we come back, Council Regis will... Okay, I'm going to um, convene Council Regis. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on October 19th, I drafted a letter to Chairman Nicola uh, informing her of my intent to propose this motion. That's my understanding of the uh, rules for rescinding motions pursuant to Robert's Rules of Order. Um, I'm not a parliamentarian, but th that's my understanding. So if I'm incorrect, I'm sure someone will correct me. But um, I'm not doing this to challenge anyone or try and sway anyone's opinion. Um, what this, my intent of this is, is to change my vote. Strictly to change my vote. This is not something I take lightly. This is something I pondered about. Um, I am not a counselor who receives a great amount of telephone calls. Uh, I just don't. I know uh, counselors up here, uh, you know, say a lot of times that their constituents call them on a regular basis. I'm not one of those counselors. However, after the October 3rd meeting, um, I received dozens of telephone calls, dozens of phone calls. Um, people who were very um, not happy with me about my, my vote. Um, I explained my position regarding this vote. Um, my my, um, my concern was the uh, moving from a three-member Board of Health to a five-member Board of Health, and I felt that I could support an elected board uh, in the spirit of compromise. Um, I listen to the individuals that are here every week and they voice their opinion. I listen to you. I take your, your comments under advisement. However, with the amount of phone calls I got, um, I really feel it's necessary for me to change my vote, if the council allows. 
um, this this to this to happen. Um, as we all know, and we all remind each other at different times, we are here to serve those people who elected us to office. And the silent majority came forward to me and expressed their opinion to me very loudly um, that they want me to. They wanted me to change my vote. And that's what I am requesting to do. So that's what this motion is all about, uh, to rescind that vote and to allow me to change my vote that I took on October 3rd regarding this issue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I find this, uh, I, I think that's an interesting suggestion by Councillor Regis. But it was Council Regis who suggested to us and emphatically in the subcommittee that we send the recommended changes once we're done with them and the state legislature's done them to the public. And the public voting at large is a far greater litmus test than a couple of phone calls or a dozen phone calls that you received because I've received nothing but favorable comments on this is the right action to take. And I believe that the editorial in the Southbridge Evening News today was spot on. It should be left as is. We should follow through with what we did at the first meeting. No redos. We should get it done as we've already done it, not go back and revisit it, and send it on to the people and let them say yay or nay. And I think I'll leave it at that for right now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. If you'd like to speak. My name is Amelia Pellegrin. I live at 275 Marcy Street. And I would just like to say that the one highlight of the October 3rd town council meeting, in my own opinion, was the 5 to 4 vote in support of an elected Board of Health. With that vote, I felt genuine hope that our town would eventually be able to work past the negativity of recent years and move forward with all of the hard work that we have to do to make this great community shine to its fullest potential. That being said, agenda item number 17 on tonight's town council meeting agenda felt like a slap in the face. I didn't know that if I liked what you were doing, I had to call you and make sure that you know. I, had I known, I'll call you every time there's a vote that I like. I mean, if that's the only way I can make sure you're not rescinding things after the fact, I will do it. Fortunately, I'm not alone in my outrage. In addition to the letter to the editor on page four of today's Southbridge Evening News, there was also the editorial from news reporter Gus Steves, which I completely agree with, entitled, Let Elected Board of Health Go to Voters. As we saw this past Wednesday, the Board of Health is far too politicized at this point to remain an appointed board from the town manager's office. We can all thank the landfill for that. And I agree with Mr. Steves. The only way that we can move forward and get past this toxic environment in town politics these last few years is to make the change from an appointed Board of Health to an elected Board of Health. Thank you. That's all for me tonight. Good evening, Larry Bynum, 79 Denison Hill Road. Um, the phone calls I've received were strongly in favor of an elected Board of Health put to the voters of this community. And as we stand right now, of course, we have an illegally constituted five-member Board of Health when the town charter very clearly says we should have a three-member Board of Health. And I'm very curious if this item number 17 is passed to rescind an elected Board of Health, what's the plan? What, do the, what does the town council expect to do if this vote to rescind an elected Board of Health is passed? Are you looking at a three-member appointed Board of Health? What are you looking at if this does pass? Is there a plan in place or not? May I answer him, Madam Chair? You certainly may. Uh, Mr. Bynum, uh, um, if this motion to rescind does pass, I then will make a motion um, to amend section 431 subsection A of the charter uh, by striking out the word three and inserting in place five, five, thereby making it a five member appointed board of health by the town manager yeah. and having that go to the voters, sir. 
go to the voters. Oh, yes, sir. Any of these charter changes? A five-member appointed Board of Health you would put to the voters? The, cha the changes that are being proposed by the council to the charter all need to, all, all will be going before the voters. I understand that, right. yes. Okay, well, I still think a five-member elected Board of Health is a much better action to take. Put it to the voters, let them decide, let people who really were on a run for the Board of Health be elected by the voters of this community. Thank you. Councilor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as Council Regis uh, said, uh, I too take everything that I do up here very seriously, and uh, I do have the utmost respect for her as a counselor and what she's doing. With that being said, tonight I will have to disagree. Um, my intentions were to reach out. I believe it should be a five-member board, and I do believe it should go to the voting members of this community. So I am going to stay with my vote. I'm not going to change my vote. Um, again, people believe it's always seven to two, seven to two, this and that. We all have our own minds, and we all are going to disagree. I'm not going to hate her for what she's doing. I have the utmost respect for her, but tonight I'm just staying with my vote because that's what I believe in. So my vote will be the same it was last time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? Okay. We had a second on this? Do we? Okay. Madam Chair? Okay. Sorry, I'm just a little slow tonight. Um, I just want to make one point. Um, if after last week's debacle to remove a sitting health board member, you don't agree that the politicization, I can't say that word, politicization of the crucial board should only be left to the people and not to someone who has the power of the police force to intimidate and the power of the appointment to manipulate. If after last week you somehow feel that this council and this manager are much smarter and better suited to pick who should protect our health, then I have nothing else to say. I urge that you leave this amendment as is for the sake of the people. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak for, come forward? No? Okay. Well, we have the motion. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? No. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? No. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Five yes, four no. Madam Chair? Yes, Councilor. I'd like to make a motion that this council <coughs> vote to amend section 431A of the Charter by striking out the word three and inserting in place thereof the word five. Second. Madam Chair, point of order. Councilor. We have had no vote to add an agenda item. There is no submission for an agenda item to do this. And I believe that the motion is out of order presently. Madam I Chair, I make a motion to add an agenda item. Second. Okay. To make a motion to add agenda item 17A. Sounds Is that good. What to we're going to do here. So I don't want to mess up any more of the uh All right. Well, let's at least get to that. Can I have a roll call, please. Council Landry. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. This is to an amendment. I mean, this is a motion to add to the agenda agenda item 17A. Right. That's all we're doing so far, councilor. Not voting. Not voting on anything other than to add Thank you. that agenda Thank you. Thank number. Thank you for the clarification. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Livingan? Yes. Council Mikucci? Yes. Council McDonald? No. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Eight yes, one no. Thank you. Okay. 
So now we have agenda item number 17A. And I'm going to need you to read that back to me so that I can write it down. Do you have that, Counselor? Okay. Yes. What is it? Uh, my motion would be to amend section 431, subsection A of the charter by striking out the word three and inserting in place thereof the word five. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Is um, that elected or appointed? The, the, the way it reads, I'm going to explain how, how it reads as it sits so far, Counselor. It reads a three-member appointed board. What Counselor Regis is doing is changing it from a three-member appointed board to a five-member appointed board. That's, that's she's, all she's doing is the existing language says three member appointed. She's changing it to a five member appointed. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Am I got that mm -hmm. right? I thought so. Okay. So that's Madam, agenda Madam Chair, item 17A. Me. Excuse Thank me. Uh, when we had our hearing uh, regarding having a five member elected Board of Health, yeah. and we had five counselors which, voting which, in the affirmative. Which hearing, sir? The hearing before the, the special hearing to have a five-member town uh, board of health in 2009. Okay. We were told that five votes weren't enough. And now tonight, I believe you need six votes to rescind a constitutional issue. And Mr. Mer McDonald's would certainly know more than I. Madam Chair. It's, it's not with previous notice. It was previous notice. It's a simple majority with previous notice. That's correct. Yes. Thank you. And that was the, int that was the you, reason Mr. for Chair. my previous notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Does somebody want to say that out loud so that the entire, go ahead. That was my reason for the previous notice and I just want to make it clear that um, I, I was, uh, I wrote this letter to uh, Chairwoman Nicole on October 19th. Um, I had considered bringing this forward on, on Wednesday um, at Wednesday's council meeting, but I knew that Councillor McDonald and, um, and Councillor Marcucci um, were not going to be here. And I don't play that game. So that's the reason why I asked for it to be placed on tonight's agenda, hoping that we would have a, a, a full, full council here this evening. So I just want to make that clear. I don't play that game. I don't, I don't play that game. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. All right. So here it is, 17A. Motion to amend 4-3-1 subsection A of the Southbridge Home Rule Charter by striking out three and inserting the word five. That's the motion. And I have a... I seconded that a motion. You did? Yes, I did. Okay. And this is the discussion. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? No. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? No. Five yes, four no. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number 18, vote to review and accept the transitional revisions of the charter to the state legislature as voted at the town council meeting of October 3rd, 2011, and to review and accept transitional provisions as prepared by the town attorney. We all have a copy of these provisions. If I may, Madam Chair. Yes, please. On October 3rd, when these seven or eight or ten charter changes were voted on, one of the votes was to uh, direct me to do some research and to come back with some transition rules as a, a working draft for vote to send along to Boston. However, from the vote, 
I went off and drafted transitional rules to segue into an elected Board of Health, and that's now been changed. So I would ask that if I could have another two weeks or another meeting to review and come back with transitional rules, because these transitional rules don't apply now. They don't. Okay. Can I have a motion to postpone? If, if I may, Madam Chair. Yes. If, if we're going to have any opportunity to get this into the legislature and have the opportunity to have it on for the ballot for the June election, mm -hmm. that I think the quicker we get this into Boston, the better off we're going to be. I understand the town attorney's comments and, and agree with them relevant to the action that was taken in the three versus five, but the other items that, that he has here, really item one, um, is still apropos and I believe even item item 1373. So I would encourage just solely that I think I, we may be doing a disservice that if this doesn't get through to the legislature in a timely fashion, we will miss the June 2012 election. And I think waiting two weeks, uh, because I think if the calendar is right, and it, it's more the town clerk's tr uh, domain than mine, but I think we need about 90 days from the, the June election in order to conduct all the business we need to to put things on, the, uh, on that election. And we're already coming up on the door of November. That basically gives us about five months to, to get this through the legislature. And I know in some of the other actions that we've taken that it's taken five to nine months yeah. to, to get some of the special legislation accomplished. And I, I would hate to see it be missed and have to either call a special election or wait, you know, for, for an additional year. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to ask the uh, town attorney, is it anything more than changing from elected to appointed? Mr. Caprera, is there more preparation needed other than to do that? I was just trying to look at that quickly. Oh, okay. Um, If there are in place five Board of <coughs> Health members now, then logic would say that when their terms come up, the reappointments would come up at the end of their terms. So conceivably, there may not need to be transition language. And I'm saying that quick, and I'm trying to think while I'm saying that, if others could put their thinking to it as well. But it, it may not require transitional language in the, in the sense that we need a transitional language when we went I see what from you're a substantial saying. change from appointed to elected. Could we take a recess, perhaps? Could you give me five minutes? I could. I'm going to take a five-minute recess to review this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Ready to go. Thank you. Okay. Um, Attorney Caprera, would you like to go over what there is here for charter changes? Please. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the transition rules, there was reference to an act in Chapter 790 that took place in 1975. The Charter Commission in 2003 suggested repealing that, but we've had a couple changes since then that bring us to the point now where in 2006, um, there was special legislation that says we will treat ourselves as a town, though we have a uh, council and town manager form of government and not a selectman town meeting form of government, we're, we're going to treat ourselves as a town except for when bylaw, bylaws are adopted and under those circumstances they need not be approved by the Attorney General after the three readings. So that um, change will be brought forward into section 1-2-1 and we, I, we already voted on that language on October 3rd. The vote on October 3rd uh, simply and clearly reiterated the language of the 2006 special legislation. So that's the first change. Because we are not transitioning into an elected Board of Health, it is an appointed Board of Health now. It will continue to be a bo an appointed Board of Health so that we don't have to uh, 
devise any transitional rules for that. There will be no vote on that necessary. And then finally, there is um, some transitional language in 13-7-3 that deals with creating bylaw review committees. Uh, that was transitional for 2004. It's past its time. So that language is no longer necessary. So, th so as a housekeeping matter, that can be um, deleted. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the town attorney. Um, so the, the other items that were voted, this is transitional provisions that we're voting on. The other items that were voted go along with this? Or go, when, does, when do the actual changes that yes, are going along? It just, yeah, this, is, this is part of the protocol to get to, to get everything submitted to Boston mm. and have them. All of these now will be sent together. Okay. And it was a chicken and egg problem that we encountered on October 3rd. In preparation for the October 3rd meeting, we couldn't draft transitional rules because we didn't know what, we're what we were going to wind okay. up with. I just wanted to make sure, because so when I first looked, I thought it was. So is <laughs> game rules for us. We, we uh, focused on the meat of the changes, gave me some time to look at them and draft some transitional rules to incorporate, okay. to combine and send all of them to Boston at the same time. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. Thank you. Mr. Clark? Just, uh, there is another section in the charter, just so the layout, it, assuming that we get through the legislature, it gets on the ballot for the June of 2012 election then there's a clause that says all those become operative on July 1st of 2012. So there'll be the, the laundry list of, I think there was 12 items, which whatever one of those, you know, if all 12 get voted, then they all become incorporative as of July 1st. <coughs> and there's language to that effect just in terms of timing. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's the explanation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? A roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 19. <coughs> Vote to ratify the town manager's reorganization plan for cable operations in accordance with memo dated October 12, 2011. So moved. Second. Do we have any discussion? Madam Chair. Would you wish to, do you want to, Councillor uh, McDonald? Well, I'll yield to uh, if the manager wants to explain. Yeah, perhaps that would be. Yeah, I a, thought a that good you suggestion. might want to go over a little of this. Thank you. When the um, when we got into renegotiation with the uh, the charter <coughs> folks, it was going to be the intent, I believe, of the committee and and myself to go in and, and make some um, adjustments to the current way that we operate the uh, the charter oper uh, the uh, cable operation here in the community. So, in terms of timing, this is more linked to the to the renewal of the charter contract. Uh, we did receive in a check from Charter for the 109000 So there's actually two components to this plan. One is the reorganization, and then the second is the implementation of the updated budget. Uh, the old budget was capped at the uh, $88,000 language that was contained in the former uh, license agreement. What the plan calls for, um, under the old structure, there was one full-time employee <clears throat> and that em full-time employee was entitled to, uh, to benefits. Under the revised plan, we would have three part-time employees, all at 19 hours per week. That keeps us under the threshold of benefits. The first position would be the station manager slash production director. The second would be the production coordinator slash editor. And the third would be the secretary slash office manager. And also the plan calls for several production assistants slash camera persons uh, would be paid a stipend uh, right now contemplated about $25, which is what we have included in the budget to promote the coverage of additional meetings and events. 
I believe that this plan makes sense for the community moving forward uh, in that by having employees that are part-time, uh, that not only do we save uh, on the costs for health insurance benefits um, that we would have to render to anybody over 20 hours, but also in the review of the plan, uh, this is actually modeled on uh, a, a group called MPAC, which is the uh, Munson Palmer uh, cable operation. Several folks went out to, to look at that operation, and I believe of all their staffers, only their executive director um, is, is actually a full-time member. Uh, everyone else in that organization is part-time. So the plan is to basically take one full-timer and split it into three part-time, and then also to put together a, a money for stipends in order to encourage more uh, people to come out. I would say we've had a great conversation with the, uh, the folks at the, at the uh, cable um, committee, and probably what we will do is uh, run the, the, the camera person stipend similar to how the police run their auxiliaries where there'll be a, a training curve in which people will have to be trained on the equipment, cover some of the meetings, and then once they get, they'll be then eligible for the stipends, but then have a system similar where <coughs> I believe the auxiliaries have to give back and cover, or cover certain events. And I, I probably will put that language into um, the, the adjustment that I'll have to do to, um, I think it's schedule five, in order to effectuate that. So, the concept would be to try to get as much coverage of events as we possibly can. In terms of the only other component to this, and, and this is, I mean, this is the charter, so I, I, I follow the rules. The, it says the town manager may pursue a plan to reorganize any town agency under his or her jurisdiction. Such an organizational plan, um, may, it actually should be, may not be amended by the town council and has, shall either be approved or disapproved in the form as submitted. That's why I had the motion very clearly uh, put there, the October 12th letter, and so to lay out the plan and to lay out the, the budget. When we were in the budget cycle, we had mentioned that we were going to do that. It was 88000 We knew that that number was going to increase. We didn't know what specific that number was going to be. We did receive the check two weeks ago, a week ago. Uh, actually more than that, um, about a month ago from the uh, charter folks. So now we know what number, we know what number to budget, to budget for. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay. <coughs> Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would suggest that this motion is inappropriate for several reasons. First, it violates the budgetary appropriation process. We voted a budget, which Council Regis said was a bare bones budget, I recall at the time. There's no room for cutting anything because there's no fat. And we procured or appropriated that budget predicated upon a set of <coughs> circumstances. Now, in the October 13th edition of the Southbridge Evening News, Town Manager Clark is quoted as saying, the Zoto situation is tied into an overall revamping of the cable station which has been several months in the making. Now, if that is the case, there are several violations of our charter that have occurred. The town manager just pointed out the first. 4-2-1, which says the manager shall, sh shall serve as a, well, I'll, that'll be the second one. The first one I would postulate has been violated is the manager shall serve as a resource to the council. The council shall provide policy and political leadership for the town. The manager shall bring policy issues to the council to consider in making policy choices and shall then implement the policies chosen by the council. Then we have 4-2-3, the manager shall, in paragraph B, keep the council fully informed regarding town and departmental operations, fiscal affairs, general problems, and administrative actions. If this has been in the bankings for seven months, the first time I heard about it was after what a, a, a video or an audio recording I heard of what took place at the cable access committee meeting of October 6th, I believe it was, where this was first presented. You can't hear me? Okay, sorry. I, I can hear myself coming back in the, in the speakers. Thanks. Under 4-2-3 of the charter, sec, uh, paragraph K, the town manager shall propose and the town council may adopt personnel rules providing for the job descriptions for all town positions based on duties, etc. This has not happened. This is happening now. The other thing that disturbs me greatly is 
no action should be taken place until this body has acted in a legislative manner, which is happening tonight. Yet I have Tuesday, October 18th edition of the Southbridge Evening News on page B3, the advertisement for a town of Southbridge local cable station looking for these positions. I made several suggestions during the budget process to start shaving some money off the budget. In the last budget cycle, last year, when we were procuring a new ambulance and we were procuring police cruises, I had asked, are we going to have to raise taxes? And I was told no, because the budget was set. It's in the budget, but it really wasn't in the budget. In December, we're going to come up and we're going to vote again this time. Just like what happened last December, we'll have to vote an increase. And that increase before this suggestion was slotted to be 3.7% increase, above and beyond what people are already paying. Now, in that same newspaper article, Mr. Clark says it's unrealistic to expect that one person could get this done and volunteers could do it, or words to that effect. It's not unrealistic. It's happened in reality for the last nine years that Mr. Zotos has, was heading up cable. It's been done by volunteers. So now in these lean times, we're expanding government by adding three more positions and doing away with volunteers to pay stipends to people who have been doing it for free. That's not fiscal responsibility. That is not good stewardship of the public's trust, of the public's money, and what they expect us to do. At a whim. This is all happening at a whim. This wasn't even a thought at our last meeting 21 days ago. Yet here we are, talking about growing government even more. That concerns me. I think this violates the Charter. I think it violates the budgetary appropriation process. And I would also like to know what happened to the concept of a committee that we had studying this to go nonprofit in which this whole system could run by itself without any taxpayer funded money as a nonprofit. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay, that'll do. That'll do. It would be nice if that was true. Um, a, a couple things in, in response. Uh, first and foremost, uh, a study group was formed. And I believe actually Councillor Clemens as well as Chairman Lazo was on that study group. We had two or three meetings to talk about this exact issue during the renegotiation. So there was nothing hidden unless I'm hiding it from the chairman or hiding it from a member of the council. They participated in the process. So I, I do take offense at that. The second, this is not taxpayer money. This is fee money. This is fee money from charter. This has absolutely zero impact on the budget. So, you know, growing government and all that, you know, that sounds nice, but it's simply untrue. In terms of the, the comment about the, the camera people, you know, I go to, I go to the, the cable committee meetings, and that was the one thing I kind of heard that they wanted. They said, we need help, we need help to get additional volunteers, and we think a stipend may make a difference. So if you don't want a manager to listen to, you know, it's, it's members of its cable committee, then you know, I guess you gotta find somebody else. But you know, I heard what they said. They said that they needed this as a tool, so I put it in place. And in terms of fiscal responsibility, having one employee, our health insurance cost for, for a family plan is $18,000, $18,000. Eliminating that as a need actually is more fiscally responsible than, than the, uh, what we currently have, in my opinion. So I appreciate you know, some of the comments, and, and, and perhaps you weren't kept up to date, and I apologize for that, but I do go through the chair and, and other members of the council in some of the actions that I take. In terms of, and I, and I alluded to this, and I will formally state, we will put together the job descriptions and we will adjust Schedule 5 to come before the council. I don't disagree with any of that. But right now, we have volunteers operating our cable studio. We need to move forward. And if moving forward is, look, I put together the reorganization plan and I submit it to council. You guys are the legislative body. I put forth what I think is in the best interest of the organization. If you don't like it, vote it down. And then I'll come back with something else. It's what we did with smart cards. You know, you didn't like that and I came back with something else. But the council needs to react to something, and I assume the council likes to react to the professional administrator to put forth what he thinks, he or she, thinks makes the most sense to move the organization forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Go ahead. Hi, Greg Gauthier on the Cable Advisory Committee with some others that are here tonight. 
I would just like to say to Mr. McDonald, our meetings are open. I'd like to thank Mrs. Clements, you, Kathy, Mrs. Regis, for coming to some of our meetings in the past few years and some other councils that we're on. They're always open. And Mr. Clark did say it. We, our member was paid out of the cable TV money, the contract. Now we have more coming. He's got a good plan. Most of us like it. There's going to be some bugs, but we've got to try something. We're going forward. And after over 10 years of doing this for free and other things, it would be nice to have a stipend. There's a lot of three-hour meetings here, two, three times a month. But it is not coming out of the taxpayers. It's coming out of the rate payers of a charter. So if you have DISH, they're not paying anything. If they go over to friends' house to watch this, they'll watch it for free. That's all I want to say. It's, he did his homework. Just one other point, if I might. <coughs> I went through this plan with the subcommittee. I then afterwards with the general government subcommittee came up to the, to the cable um, group and spoke at that, went through the plan in, in great detail, and the cable, the cable committee did vote four to two to support this plan. Thank so you. we did receive a, a majority vote. Okay. Thank you. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Still think that the council should have been informed, and the fact that this is on the agenda tonight, a week after an advertisement has been put out there without formal approval, begs the question of whether or not an open meeting law violation occurred. Because how do you know you got the five votes to pass it and you're already advertised for it? That question is still begged and left out there in the open because it's out there, we're doing this, and we haven't even approved this plan yet. And I think that presents some problems. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, just, just to the advertisement, you know, one of the things I get frustrated with is people say government moves really slowly. In this circumstance, government should move as efficiently as private business. I had absolutely no intent, if the council were to vote this plan down, that position doesn't have to be filled or won't be filled. But to give myself at least the opportunity to have candidates come forward for, a position that, for, for positions that would be proposed, I think is just due diligence to me to try to get it. If the council were to vote it down, then the ad would be canceled and we would send notices to folks that, you know, that they're not welcome. So in the, the town accountant would not let me authorize payment to any person unless things were in place prior to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> Mr. Bynum. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, a new 10-year contract was just signed and negotiated, right, effective July 1st? Correct. I don't know if it was July 1st, but it, it was it, just recently. Yes. Okay. And the income from charter subscribers is $109,000 per year. Does that escalate through, through each you, year? Madam Chair, correct. That's correct. We received a check for $109,000 and some change. And the town takes $30,000 of that, right, for town budget expenses, right? For indirect costs, yes. So that leaves $79,000 each year. As I had mentioned to you about one year ago, my idea was an independent nonprofit 501c3 corporation that would be without political influence, a standalone location outside of the Southbridge Town Hall, preferably on Main Street in a studio, a small location on Main Street where money could be paid for rent and you could have the three employees. And it would be a lot, uh, I feel, more efficient, better operation completely outside of all the political influence that has been involved with the cable operation over the last several years. Did you consider and look at that alternative also? Can I answer that if you wish? Sure. Just, um, you know, there, there's an illusion out there that, you know, the government can't do things in an unbiased and fair manner and that a nonprofit is, is going to do that. I don't necessarily buy into that. I, I take my job and my responsibilities very seriously. Folks that are very critical of this government and very critical of this council do get their shows aired you know, in, the, in the current operation. So in terms of, I, I don't think the community should, should attempt to delude itself that the, the nonprofit is going to be the silver bullet. Secondly, um, the issue, and I said this at the, at the cable committee, so I'm happy to repeat it because I know it was filmed at that. I believe that, and I think the study group came up with this, is that we have to have a functioning 
organization before we determine how the management of that is going to occur whether the management of that continues to be under the town umbrella or whether the management of that is under the umbrella of a nonprofit is is to be determined but i think one of the things that i said to the to the group is that we have to have an organizational structure that works in either way mm -hmm. so that that's step 1 and then step 2 would be to make that determination as to whether it would be a nonprofit or stay within the confines of the government the one thing though i think that there and, and i want to make this really clear is that we have a cable franchise agreement that specifically got, puts out guidelines for what kind of shows should be on there and it's it's pegged public education and government and those obligations whether it's done by the town or whether it's done by a nonprofit group have to be complied with this is contractual compliance issues mm. plain and simply so having a nonprofit that wants to convert this into an NBC or an ABC you know really isn't going to happen because the primary mission of that group is to make sure that the that the government channels and the education are on and then anyone that submits material I mean we know people submit material and that goes on to the public access mm -hmm. so in, in terms of that that question is yet to be answered but I think organizationally we need to improve the operation first and then make the determination as to whether a change in the management is necessary or not. I would still advocate a strong, independent, nonprofit 501c3 corporation with a strong board of trustees, <laughs> preferably six to eight uh, board members who would have tight control over the Southbridge cable access operations. Uh, the cable access operations really belong to the townspeople, right? The townspeople really uh, have ownership in the cable access programs. So again, 30000 a year is taken for the town from charter subscriber money, not tax money. That is charter subscriber money is taken for the town. Uh, if that was returned and the whole $109,000 was there each year, you would have more than sufficient funds to run the cable operation as a nonprofit corporation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I just, if I, if I might, when we looked at the, 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 um, the cable operation up in Palmer and Munson, it was fairly obvious that the $30,000 in indirect costs, basically what that covers is the management of the studio by myself, the accountant's time, the treasurer's time, e every other piece of this organization. So the taxpayers are reimbursed for taxpayer time that otherwise we would be dedicated for. That's what the indirect cost is. If the, in the study group had this, because I got the budget, if you look at the budget that was done for the Palmer and Munson, it's probably not going to be sufficient funds that will exist in order to operate on their own. So it can be purported that everything can be done within $30,000, but in reality, an operation that is larger than, larger than ours uh, has a tremendous amount of additional carrying costs well above that $30,000 worth of indirect costs we have here. So to sit and say that $30,000 is going to cover everything quite frankly, is just, I think you're responsible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to say that I, I did um, attend the uh, tour up there in, in Palmer and uh, sat in on a number of meetings. It's very interesting information. We took a lot of uh, suggestions to heart by Mr. Minema and Mr. Gaddy and a number of others. One of the things that appeared very clear to me from a business perspective was that while $109,000 may sound a lot like a lot of money, it certainly wasn't in regard to how they get their monies and the size of their budget was, they were a beautiful station, certainly much more than we probably need, but certainly um, what we were getting was less than 109 at the time and it just wasn't feasible at that moment. And also there were some function issues that we all agreed if this was ever going to happen to be a 5013C that we needed to certainly meet those challenges <clears throat> in terms of operations before we jumped in and just wa wasted wasted cable uh, subscribers money I being one of them um, so you know I, I think a lot of us individually want to make sure our money is going towards programming and, and towards uh, uh, policies and such that that benefit the entire community that's what you pay for so um, I think that 
the steps you've taken so far make a lot of sense. Certainly uh, the $30,000 overhead may seem high to some, but as you pointed out, uh, not necessarily that bad in today's economy. We also did invite uh, Mr. Bynema and, and such to uh, bring forth information on a place to do this. Did you go out and, I, I asked this and we've asked this numerous times, where's the budget? Where's the proposed uh, budget for running a 5013C? Because clearly we've not ever gotten that work done um, from those who were suggesting it. And I realize our town manager is, is charged with that, but we are also charged with running the community, running a school, running a landfill, running many things. And we did ask if they had such suggestions and they really felt they were feasible, just to put down a very small cost-benefit analysis type thing. Come out, go around, look and see what locations were available for this. Man many other components. We just said do a little bit of volunteer homework. If you can come to these meetings and, and tell us all the time what we should do, then perhaps you should bring some of that um, information with you that would most be helpful to us. So I think in the end, what we're doing here sounds good, sounds fair to the cable people. I know that came up numerous times for Mr. Bonham and Mr. Gotti in terms of not having a stipend or even giving them pizza at a meeting. And I think that that's been addressed and that's good that we can certainly um, you know, uh, appreciate their their uh, part that they play and the, their volunteer duties with a little bit of something extra. So I think that the plan sounds good for now. Can it be changed? Absolutely. Nothing's locked in stone, but let's go forward from here. Let's, let's work on it one step at a time, professionally, businessly, and, and come up with, um, a, with a good cable program for the viewers who pay that, that rate money. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Sir? You got a Councillor. Which one? Councillor McDonald? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, whether you call them taxpayers or whatever, still, would you change something and you increase costs that's coming in through the operations of, sitting, uh, the, uh, of the system? It's passed on somewhere, and that's to the people on the other end of that cable who are looking at the television. And that means their rates could rise. So taxpayers, citizens, whatever you want to call them, the rate payers who are using it, it still is something that could cause on an effect. And to Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones or whoever's on the end in this difficult time, they're finding it hard to... to make their house payments, so we have a lot of homes in foreclosure, um, and that would still be a concern, and I just wanted to emphasize that. If you want to slant it, taxpayers or whatever, still rate payers, it still affects them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Actually, just Clark, just, I'm sorry, and, and I, just, I, will, just, I promise I will just, not continue to go back and forth with this. I, I did do a, um, a public information meeting. I couldn't agree more. And I made sure that we did a public information meeting that was uh, televised, that was put out to, the, uh, to all the subscribers. We talked about what that increase would be. And the cable committee was, I think, unanimous. Uh, no, not unanimous. They had one that, that did not go along with the, the, the changes at that point in terms of the budget structure. But, you know, there was not one single call received in the office about the, the rates going up. So I took that as the cable committee was wholly in support of improving the operation, and we are moving forward in terms of that based upon the, the participation with the cable committee. But we did, we did do a public information meeting to try to encourage people to come in and call it because of, I was concerned about the rates going up, and unfortunately, we, we didn't have any, any takers. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Steve Lazo, 52 Northwood Stock Road. Um, point of clarification through you to the town manager. I don't know. Uh, I think there were two no votes instead of one you just mentioned on the cable committee. The most recent reorganization was four to two yeah, when we did I the, believe it was the charter two agreement. Two against. The, the charter agreement originally was actually okay. only one. I, I, I just, maybe I'm taking it wrong. Uh, uh, we're all fairness to the town manager. Um, he did form a committee. I was on it. I don't know what happened <coughs> to that committee. I, uh, after reading what was going on in the paper with cable, I called uh, Yvonne in the office and asked where that committee stood. Um, we did go to Palmer, a group of us, uh, uh, Mark Karen, uh, Scott Lazo, Mr. Gaddy, Councilor Clements, myself, town manager. I don't know if Bob Dupree was there. I, I don't remember. If I left anybody out, I'm, I'm sorry. But we went there. It was very informative, what Council Clement said. Um, I believe there were a couple more stations we were going to go to, but we never did. And there was, an, there was another meeting I missed. Um, and I don't know what happened to that committee. Through you to the town manager, mm -hmm. um, does it still stand, that committee? 
through you, Madam Chair. Number one, it was not a committee. It was a study group. A study group, I'm sorry. Uh, and then secondly, it was at that meeting, uh, I think that you did miss, um, former, former chair, that we talked about uh, the need to, to put forth a reorganization plan and submit it. So I kind of laid out the blueprint several months ago in terms of what I thought what made sense. And I did ask, I think from that, com from that group, you know, did the did the Palmer Munson model make sense? And, and I got the kind of, I won't say a green light, but I, I got the sense from the room that it did. So basically, it's taken me a little bit, but what I said I was going to do back then to put forward is now what's being put forward. So it was agreed with the study committee. I'm sorry I missed that meeting. Um, and this is etched in stone, and this is the way it's going to be. The study committee is now over, or are you going to keep that study committee together, keep looking into probably making it nonprofit or doing something different? I, personally, I don't, I don't agree with the way you want to do it, but that's my opinion. Um, I think if you do it this way, it should be temporary, and let that study committee go forward and look into uh, other things. I don't know if there was a question in there or if that yeah, was, more, if that was more comment. It, kind of a question and a comment, I'm sorry. But I, I think, um, you know, in terms of, and I said this, by charter, um, it's incumbent upon me to put forth a reorganization plan for the town to consider. So I put forth the reorganization based upon what the, the charter lays out um, and what, what the council wants to do with it. Either we keep going forward or, or we don't. Yep. In terms of the, the second part of your question about can we continue to study and look at the issue of having a nonprofit, absolutely. But I think that the first, the first step here and, and what I thought we had talked about at the study group was we need to make sure we have an organization that's sound first and then we can get into the nonprofit and, and look at that seriously. Okay, I see where that's coming from. That's good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, John Pulaski, Jenison Street, real quick. Uh, listening to this meeting, I would, I would think that Palmer was run, the, the organization Palmer was run by the town of Palmer, but it's a, it is a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So we're not fitting that model in any way. It's at best a 40% a, a of that model. And uh, Mr. Town Manager, you said that this isn't a silver bullet, but I think it is a silver bullet, but pointed in the other direction. Uh, I've seen on numerous occasions where information that people tried to put on, on the cable were, well, shucks, I just, I wish as, for example, when Mr. Marchetti put something on in the springtime, and uh, you would think that uh, something terrible had happened. And the cable director, was a, there was an inquisition on whether or not he helped put that piece, uh, video piece out. Suddenly, there's a concern about the intellectual property of some rock and roll band that was on there. Oh, we got to pull it off the air because there's, and then lawyers were pulled in from outside of town. And uh, I just, you know, looking at the whole thing, this, this mad rush to do things that don't need to get done yet, for example, this, the core means and then we have other things where the accountant of this town advised the town council in 2007 that if they voted for the landfill contract we would be getting three million dollars a year the next year so what I don't get is you know we're firing I shouldn't say we I don't want to be a part of it the, a cable director who volunteered for two years who puts in an extra 20 or 30 hours sometimes 70 80 hours a week in some weeks He's released just 10 months before his pension. 10 months before getting a pension. I mean, when General Motors does that stuff, they blush and they reverse their decision. So, you know, you, you would think that some terrible crime was committed, but really all Paul was trying to do was secure free speech in town hall. And, and you know, I can't get into it too much because there's a lawyer involved, but it looks to me, because Paul was trying to do his job, he got fired. And now we got... Yes, thank you. It's true. It's true. And I, you know, this is all point here. He it's lets close. both sides speak. My three minutes are probably. He lets both sides speak. He was fair. He went by the rules. And just as something else happened tonight where I don't think you're going by the rules, I don't think you're going by the rules here. And uh, this is why I think, uh, you know, I would never want to serve on this council because I'd be afraid of getting indicted. But if this town ever has selectmen again, I'm going to run for selectmen. Good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's move forward on this one. I have um, 
by, it's been so long. Was there a motion made on this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Seven yes, two no. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 20, vote to discuss a resolution to the complaint of open meeting law violation, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 23, submitted by Attorney Gary S. Brackett. Um, before us, we have this open meeting law violation complaint, and I will read it. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 23, I'm filing this complaint on behalf of my client, client Ann Fenwick Bynema, <coughs> alleging a violation of the open meeting law. Specifically on September 12, 2011, the Town Council entered executive session, allegedly pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21, three, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Ms. Bynema. In fact, on that date, there was no pending or imminent litigation involving Ms. Bynema and the Town of Southbridge. It is our position that the true purpose of the executive session, as requested by Town Manager Christopher Clark, was to discuss the reputation and character of my client as a result of an August 10, 2000 letter, 2011 letter, which I had sent to Mr. Clark. Mrs. Bynema was not provided with the required statutory written notice and therefore she was denied the right to be present at the executive session to speak on her own behalf, to have counsel with her and to cause an independent record to be made of said executive session. In addition, Ms. Bynema was denied her statutory right to demand that any such discussion be conducted in open public session. I advised Town Council Robert Caprera of my concerns on this matter by letter sent by facsimile on September 12, 2011, the day of the meeting, a copy of which is enclosed on behalf of my client, I demand that the town council publicly acknowledge that said executive session was conducted in violation of the open meeting law and that the town council vote to release the minutes and all documents associated with said executive session to the public and my client immediately. In addition, Ms. Bynum demands that as a remedy, the town council vote not to conduct any executive sessions regarding Ann Bynema or any other individual except in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law Section, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 21, and all other applicable provisions of the statute. Please contact me if you require any additional information regarding this matter. Very truly yours, Gary S. Brackett. Um, I think that for the most part, this has been addressed as of the last meeting that we had last week. However, in accordance with the open meeting law, when a complaint is brought before the body, the body must respond. So that's why it's here this evening. And I would suggest that we might want to ask Town Attorney Rob Caprera to just go over some of the reasoning that you used the other night in um, discussing this issue with um, attorney Gary Brackett. The um, section three, exemption three, deals with litigation. Attorney Brackett forwarded a letter to the town. It was my opinion that that letter was substantial to put us into exception three. And two meetings went into executive session. Uh, I am not obviously able to say what went on in the executive session, but I am um, sticking by what I said when I was asked before we went into executive session. Did I think that that letter fell within exception three? And I did. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh. I yield to that. No, I was Councilor just McDonald. I'm confused as to what to do because how do we debate this and how do we vote on this without compromising an executive session? That's a good point. Maybe you'd like to ask Attorney Brackett because he's the one who has a complaint of an open meeting law violation here that needs to be addressed in order for us not to be in, in violation of the open meeting law. 
Um, what the public may not be aware of, though I, I suspect most are and are just trying to push us to the point of actually telling you what went on. Excuse me. I don't, I don't need advice in the background. Thank you. I will not be divulging what information took place in executive session. However, I will say, as was stated previously, that I don't feel we violated an open meeting law or I wouldn't have stepped into that room. Um, you know, a few years ago, there were members of this council who were not happy with the, the, a lot of the opinions that were coming forward by our then present council, our attorneys. So there was a big push to get rid of them, and they were successful. And we had a, um, a committee that formed to look at a brand new attorney for the community. And we have Attorney Caprera. And it's, it's kind of funny to me that a lot of the same people who wanted to get the previous attorneys that we had representing this community out of town still question the opinions coming from this attorney. Same people. At some point, you have to accept what it is. Whether you like hearing it or not, whether I like hearing it or not, or you don't like it because it doesn't go along with what you want the attorney to say, that's what it is. I don't always like what the attorney has to say either, but I'm not an, a lawyer, and the last time I looked out in the audience, I don't see too many of them out there either. So with that said, when the attorney tells us as a counsel that this is something that is totally within our purview, to step into executive session to review material, I'm going to listen to him. So um, as far as answering Councillor McDonald's question, we do have to come up with something here. It is, it's required. And since Councillor Clements has spent more time than any other councillor ever in reviewing and studying and questioning the open meeting law, I'm going to ask you, go ahead. Could you answer Councillor McDonald's question, Councillor Clements? Well, the, the question at hand, it, thank you, Madam Chair, but uh, please. The, more so than that, I. No, more so than I. That may, I will agree with that, <laughs> um, but perhaps not others. Um, the, the question is that we need a resolution to the complaint. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, all is necessary on this without divulging anything is to make a motion as to whether or not uh, we need that we believe that there was a violation that occurred and therefore that would be our resolution would be no violation occurred if the vote were to be you know for that and obviously if it's not then then we would come up with something else but in my you know I, I not saying how I would vote but certainly um, if the motion were to be that we agree uh, with as the town attorney stated that there was reason enough to go into open meeting I mean to go into an executive session then that would be uh, I believe that's all we have to do. I mean, if we don't agree, we don't vote yes. If we agree, we vote yes. Okay. I mean, so the motion would be uh, to um, that there was no open meeting law violation, um, and that's what we submit to the attorney general's office. I'll second, second that. Okay, and it's open to discussion. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Councilor. Chair. I disagree with Councilor Clements because, as I said. If we vote one way or the other, a particular vote in any direction could be an indication. The way this should have been addressed is an executive session. If we're talking about uh, an executive session and a violation of executive session, then this should have taken place in executive session. That's what I would postulate. Um, the reason I asked the question the way I asked it was because we are sitting here addressing it in open session. and it, we can't really address this question in open session without leading anyone to a, con a possible, one way or the other, a perceived conclusion. And, and to me, I feel uncomfortable even discussing it in this manner, but it's before us and we have to address it. Okay. Well, one thing I, I do want to point out to you, Councillor, is you were not here at our last meeting. And at that meeting, there were an awful lot of things that were addressed because 
the person that was basically what the meeting was all about had waived executive session. So an awful lot of things that normally would not have been discussed in this, in this chamber were discussed because Mrs. Bynema had chosen, had been given options, and had cho opted to have this done in open session. You were not here to witness the things that were discussed in that meeting. And that is why I'm not completely uncomfortable in speaking about a little bit. I'm not going to divulge what took place in that room, but in this room, it's a different story. That whole meeting this past week was held right here, not in there, behind closed doors in executive session. And some of the, the wording and the questions that Attorney Brackett had at that meeting had to do with this open meeting law violation. Before I go any further, I might add that with all due respect to Attorney Brackett, he has not followed the way you complain, have you issue a complaint for an open meeting law violation at all. And there was a person who had had an open complaint of an open meeting law violation not that long ago who had to had to go back and reword it and put it together and therefore there was some time lapse if you recall. Mm -hmm. However, this attorney who should know better has not even put together the proper format for a complaint of an open meeting law violation. He doesn't answer, first of all, it's not even the form. It's his own, on his own letterhead. Secondly, because I'm getting to be quite an expert at these, um, there's no, nothing here indicating what he wants, what he suggests, none of that. There's none of that here. He doesn't even address who the open meeting law violation is actually against. It's just here. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure that much has to be done with this particular complaint because it doesn't even follow the proper protocol for complaint of an open meeting law violation. I'm not a lawyer, but I've sat here and I've looked at them. I've, I've received quite a few. And that's, that's, this is not how they look. Am I correct? Actually, you know, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I didn't even think about that, but absolutely, I mean, the, the law is very clear that you have to put it in the form. And we did have one uh, person that submitted it, and we let him resubmit it on the appropriate form, even though it was after, uh, after the time. So I, I hadn't even brought that, I hadn't even thought about that. Just, to, you know, one of the things I, I think for the council's benefit, um, the councilor's benefit, uh, Attorney Brackett did read this at, at, the, uh, at the last session. So, you know, I would question what, what opportunity do we have to go into executive session now to discuss something that's already been breached and, and, and done in open session. So I think whether we like it or not, this is a, a valid topic for, for open session. Madam Chair, may I? Excuse me. Let, let Mrs. Bynum speak. Madam Counselor, mm -hmm. I think the point you're missing is Mr. Caprera got a fax and a letter stating that it was not litigation at that point. Maybe Mr. Caprera didn't understand it. There was no litigation at that point. You went into executive session, held an illegal executive session. This form, he does, Attorney Brackett does not have to use the forms that the general public uses. Well, he is no, already taking true. it to the Attorney General. You have to respond and admit you went into executive session mm -hmm. and then get a resolution. You people sit here and talk about lawyers. You got what you paid for. And it appears Mrs. Bynum is serving you because it's not, you're speaking for your attorney, so I guess you got what you paid for as well. Did you have yes. something further? Yes. Just, in, just in regard to Councillor McDonald's concerns, I, as I said, the motion is, is we went in pursuant to C38 S21, mm -hmm. plain and simple, whatever our agenda item was. Mm -hmm. if, we don't be, if we believe that was valid, then the motion should be that pursuant to our reasoning for going in, we feel, we're not talking about why we went in there. We're not no. talking, I've mentioned no names, I've mentioned no nothing. The word litigation has come up a number of times. You mentioned nothing. I'm saying, according to the reasoning we went in, we did not 
violate the open meeting laws. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. The motion isn't about anything that went on in the session. No. The motion isn't about anything but what was written on our agenda item. And I'm saying the motion should be, based on the agenda item, we did not break any open meeting law. We're not saying what we did inside there. We're just saying that if he wants to pursue it and go deeper, that will be up to the Attorney General's office or, or whoever, his client, whichever. I'm saying we are addressing the open meeting law violation, which is saying we went in illegally. Okay. So I'm saying if the vote is that we did not go in, we went in according to our agenda item, that's what we're voting on. We're not voting on what happened inside. We're not vote talking about what happened inside. And I, I think it's offensive that we continue to talk about what's inside when it clearly should stay there. So would you like to make a motion? That there as, was to no what the, as to what the resolution Sorry. is that we would we would send. What is the motion? The motion was that there was no open meeting law violation. Right. It was by Councillor Clemens and Plain I and believe simple. seconded okay. by uh, Councillor Regis. Like, they'll come yes. back to us, they'll let us know and we'll continue on with this. Okay. But at this point, if that's the vote, I mean, obviously it depends on how people vote. Okay, wait a second. Councillor McDonald. Thank you. And follow up to what you had said. I spent yesterday morning watching the entire meeting that took place on mm -hmm. the 19th. So I am familiar with what happened. Mm. This is not relative to last week's meeting. This clearly states this is dealing with September 12th. Yes. We cannot discuss what occurred in there on September 12th. We can talk about, like you said, with the litigation. Right. But you're asking us to take a vote, which there may be somebody up here. You don't know which, which way they're going to vote. And right. we can't vote on this. I don't believe we can take action on this. Because it, 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 there's the potential, or the, I, I just I feel very uncomfortable with that. Okay, mm -hmm. well then you can, you can abstain if you don't wish to vote, Councillor. However, we're not talking about the contents of discussion that went in an executive session. We're talking about this council voting to go into executive session, and that's what this open meeting law violation is all about. So no, I don't see that there's any, any concern or any reason to be concerned, you know, about violating an open uh, executive session because we're not discussing what went on in that in that session if I may Attorney madam, Capera. madam chair mm -hmm. in the chronology of this it was presented to me should we go into executive session is this the type of thing that would put us this letter from attorney Brackett the type of thing that would put us into executive session I own this decision none of the people up here went into executive session. It was my opinion that directed us into executive session. It was under section three, which has to do with litigation. As a lawyer, I reviewed Attorney Brackett's um, letter, and I felt that we fell clearly within the litigation exception for two reasons. A third I can't speak of because of all the information that I'm aware of and that was discussed in executive session. But two open reasons. One, uh, was that the litigation involved Mrs. Bynema. If she had never been involved in litigation with the town, I'd say she might not ever do that. One of the whole issues was that she sued the town. So this is a person who's already sued the town, and I have to take that into account. I would hate to have to face the council and say, you've been sued again. I didn't put you into executive session. The second was that I'm aware of the climate uh, that the information contained in Attorney Brackett's letter alluded to, and it's the same climate that we've heard at the last two meetings. How many times in public have people threatened to sue the town? I, don't you find that peculiar that people will go to that microphone one after the other and threaten to sue the town and the counselors? That's the climate in which I reviewed the letter. And so in reviewing the letter, I felt clearly that litigation was here. Litigation was tangible. And so we went into executive session to discuss it. And under that exception three, I made the opinion, no one else here, we went through that door because of what I did, and I will take the responsibility for it. Uh, it was made on, on information, just not pulled out of the air. Thank you. Okay, we have a, a, a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Makuji? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Abstain. Seven yes, one no, one abstain. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Agenda item number 21 Councilor's Forum. Councilor McDonald. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a couple of things this evening. The uh, first thing is I uh, have a question for the, through you to the town manager. I've been hearing that we have a new employee in the town manager's office. Is that correct, that we've added another staff, part-timer to the uh, town manager's staff? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's why I wanted to ask. Number two. As I stated just a moment ago, I watched the meeting last Wednesday in its entirety. And I am very, very certain that the vote was not completed. There was a vote to accept the amended motion by Councillor Regis. There was a vote to accept the amendment by Councillor Vice Chairman Clements. And there was never any subsequent vote on the main motion. So I believe there was a defective meeting last Wednesday. And I believe a review of the tape will bear that out. Uh, next thing, another question I have through you, Madam Chair, to the town manager is, has the contract or the proposal with Green Brown Consulting been signed and entered into? Yes. It has. Okay. I know there was some uh, issue raised relative to that proposal because the business in, did not have a particular business license. Um, now, I put a request into the town manager on October 12th or so, actually October 7th, asking if uh, we had done a request for proposal because the amount was $36,000, and if so, uh, what went out to bid in listing of newspapers and periodicals it was in. I did get a response back from the uh, town manager saying that no RFP was needed because there was no bid, that the proposal is an exempt service according to Chapter 30B, the Uniform Procurement Act, Section 1, Clause 30. Now, I have that here in front of me. And Clause 30 states quite clearly in Chapter 30B, a contract for the collection, transportation, receipt, processing or disposal of solid waste, recyclable or compostable materials. Now that's what Casella does. When I look through Green Brown Consulting in this proposal, that is not what's happening here. What is happening here is conduct enforcement of Section 10-1, audits, recycling setouts, banned waste items, data entry, help recycling, coordinator, etc. These are services. And as such, it's my view, and I would suggest that this should have gone out to bid in accordance with the procurement law. And so I want to serve notice that I, I would like to request that at the next town council meeting we put an agenda item to rescind the vote that put forward this contract. I also have some other concerns. As in our packet this weekend, I had asked also in that email um, that I receive a copy of Mr. Jacobson's resume. And I, I was told it wasn't available, but it, it was in my packet this weekend. And so in looking through this, I ended up noticing some certain things. Uh, uh, one of the things in particular I was interested in was employment history. And I noticed that from 2004 to 2007, Mr. Jacobson worked for a company called Holden Sanitation, which I know the principal and chief executive officer of the corporation and is on file as uh, uh, in a different corporation that was doing business as Holden Sanitation was the current director of the health department, Mr. James Morin. And <laughs> when I saw that, and I wow. take in consideration there's no business file, and we have this, and I know of no public disclosure of any such thing, it, it concerns me. It concerns me greatly. And so I think it would be in order to make notice that we do need to make a motion to rescind that contract until we can figure out whether or not. And I think, I don't know, I looked at, at it yesterday because that's when I had time to research this. And uh, I don't know if the Inspector General is the appropriate avenue or not, but I think it needs to be looked at. I'm getting very concerned with how things are going down in, in, in relative to the actions that we're, we're doing as a council. Now, having said that, what are we accomplishing 
What have we done as a council to improve the lot of the lives of the people and citizens here? Um, that's what we should be focusing on. Trying to. Well, I would like to see us do some things that address people's immediate needs for relief in, in taxes, uh, relief in being able to make and retain their homes. We have values that are going down and people are having trouble making them. They are walking away from their homes. There are, the labor force in Southbridge, according to the MassGov website, is about 8,000 people. We have a 12% unemployment rate in Southbridge, and the state's 9%. Mm -hmm. We should be focusing on things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, dealing with the people, if 12% of 8,000 is a large number mm -hmm. in our workforce. So um, I would hope that we could start looking at doing things that are going to benefit the taxpayers by reducing our financial footprint. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Madam. Great. Um, <laughs> Council Livingwood. They probably won't clap when I speak, so no, I'm going to pass probably tonight. Probably not, but that's okay. I'll listen. I'll pass. Thank you. Councilor Spinelli. I'll pass. Thank you. Councilor Langevin. Uh, on a positive note, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanks, uh, Halloween. We're not going to see each other. Uh, community and do we have any information on that for the public that we can uh, get on the access channel do we have any yeah you know I realized I made an announcement about the parade at the last meeting and I should have brought that again and I, I didn't bring it we'll, we'll put something up on the uh, the website thank you thank you mr. Clark that's all thank I have you. thank you counselor um, Councilor Vandal um I have a few things uh, the railroad tracks down by the Golden Creek, I suggested that they be removed uh, a while back, and I don't see anything being done down there. Uh, number two, the park benches in the Elm Street Park across the street and the bench in front of the library, they need serious maintenance, painting, you know, for one. Uh, I got a couple of calls today from, from people that said that when Casella picks up their trash, they throw the bins down and they throw the covers, you know, they want their covers put back on their bins. She said, well, I know it's gonna take a lot extra time, but you know, I would like my cover, you know, back on the bin. And one of the ladies mentioned that this evening, I had it on my list. And number four, at the, at the uh, Casella waste systems up there, They've been showing a film on the TV, you know, the cable access, and it, says, it shows a plant, a uh, recycling plant where the conveyors, you know, and they dro dropped it on the tarmac, you know, in the building, and they do, the re they do recycling. I called the Board of Health two weeks ago. I've called numerous times since. I says, can you tell me where that is? And she says, well, I, I don't know. I said, well, can you find out? And she says, well, I'll try to, I'll try to, you know. She didn't call me back, so I called her. And I said, did you find out? She says, well, it could be three places, Southbridge, Auburn, or some other place, she had said. I said, well, I want to know which place. And she said, she said, I don't know. And I keep calling, and I don't get, they don't respond. It's not in Southbridge, I'm going to tell you now. So that is false advertising more or less because people in Southbridge think that it's Southbridge the plant and it's not in Southbridge. I don't know if it's Auburn or the other one. I think the manager has Thank you. an answer for you. Yeah, I've, I've, looked at the, I've looked at the video. I've actually gone to both facilities to see how they operate and they have one in Charlestown and they have one in Auburn. Uh, the footage that you see is, is one of those two plants so it is a Casella plant. Uh, they don't have Southbridge because, quite frankly, we don't have the electricity done. So they can't move into something that they don't have the utilities to accomplish. So the reason why that plant isn't operational right now, let's hope that in the short, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to put a plant like that and have it be operating in Southbridge so we can get some folks employed. Uh, that's a, that's a so an excellent So as soon as suggestion. they get electricity, they're going to put a plant like that right in Southbridge. Yeah, like perfect. they were supposed to do from the beginning. Yeah. But the, the town has to deliver on what we said we would deliver on. Well, what's taking so long? We okayed the electrical for quite a while now. We had no. to we had to okay National the road National before National we could. Grid. We had to okay the road, Councillor Vandal, before any utilities were going to start 
coming in, and it took a long time that to get that. Wait a second, yes, please. Yes. I'm speaking now. That <laughs> took a long time to get that okayed, and once it did, have you ever tried to get anything done by National Grid? Do you know that when my first year on town council in 2005, I identified three different areas that needed lights, light poles, that needed lights. One was behind the, res, the, the town pool up uh, on High Street. I'm still waiting. That's National Grid. So by us delaying the, uh, the, the vote on the access road, we put ourselves in a position where now we have to wait for National Grid to come. How long so has the road been in operation now? Quite a while. Quite a while. And right? that's National that's Grid. National. That's the way National Grid works, Councillor. Period. That's, there's, there's no getting around it. You can't say, I want to come first. They do what they do. It's National Grid. It's a monopoly. It's, that's what it is. So that's why we're waiting. But they're definitely going to put up recycling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. But, it, but we had to, as, as the uh, manager said, we had to make good on our end. Now we have to wait for so, the utility company. So then company. The, the trash system that we've got in operation right now, it's recyclable trash, it can all go in one bucket after. Because they're going to do the recycling up there, right? Eventually, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Regis. Very quickly. Um, I was wondering through you to the town manager, we have our names and, and uh, contact phone numbers on the website. I was wondering if for those counselors who wish to share them, if we could also get our email addresses posted there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I'll provide mine to you. Thank you. Um, also, um, I've already uh, communicated this in private. I'm going to do it in public, and I wish that my fellow counselors would Join me in wishing our chair a, happy, a very happy birthday today. Uh, it's her birthday. Are we supposed and, to sing? Um, <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> happy, happy birthday. Um, Thank you, Council. You're welcome. Also, I don't know. I, I hope this is appropriate. Um, I would just um, ask if we could um, take a moment of silence to honor um, Councilor Clements's mom. Thank you, Councilor Regis. Um, it, is, it is not Councilor Clements's custom to like to call a lot of attention to herself, but I think your suggestion is, is warranted. So if you would, please, the passing of, of um, Councilor Clements's mother, could we have a moment of silence? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clements, would you like to give us a date? Sure. Um, oh, you also have Councillor Clements. Yeah. I suppose I'll let you speak. So well, I wasn't going to say so, too much because so of the patient. cold, but um, uh, in terms of the, the Councillor Vandal's concern about the, the benches, I know that came up before, and I thought, was there not an Eagle Scout project or something that repaired we had, some we of those, those benches? We had those done about two years ago. So the question I would have, are the benches just in need of paint, or are they physically in need of, of replacement again? Painting. Um, painting. Just paint. Painting. And painting. is it possible that we could once again get um, a, a volunteer group for perhaps the probation kids who, who we've used for town cleanup on numerous occasions, including this past Saturday, 18 bags of trash, mind you. Um, thanks to all who came out and helped on Saturday morning. It was a beautiful day and it really uh, got your mind cleared out. Mm -hmm. So I do appreciate everyone's help. Um, so perhaps we could see somebody mm -hmm. else who might want to do some, some of the painting or scraping or whatever. And also I think the Southridge High School kids sometimes need projects, the, uh, the National Honor Society or whoever needs that project. Perhaps that would be a good community, uh, take pride in your community kind of service project to do. Um, and lights, I, I have a question. Um, when street light, I know we pay a large street light bill. So if a street light is left on 24 hours a day, a regular average street light on a regular side street, who, where do you report that to and, and with concern for waste of money, electricity? Because it's when that got brought up, there was somebody who pointed out a light to me the other day and I thought, wow, it's, it's on daylight. And they said it's on 24 hours a day. So it's just a normal street light. So I'm just curious um, 
who should be where should we be reporting that to perhaps? actually if you want to call the office they do have a um, an online service for us for municipal officials to be able to report okay but as the chair's kind of mentioned we haven't had altogether that much success right. with national grid well replacing a bulb numbers. might be at their cost but running the electric is at ours mm -hmm. so if they're leaving lights on 24 hours a day it's our cost right. so but yeah if um, you have the poll number and the address okay. that would be helpful super i'll get that for you um, and I think that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Regis. I appreciate that. Um, so next meeting date will be uh, Monday, November 7th, 2011, 7 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Thank, thank you, you. Councilor. Agenda item number 23, adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Thank you very much.